All right, welcome to episode 16, week two of the Thursday inning stretch. This is going to be very quick, down and dirty. Uh, I'm going to start sharing the screen right now. Let's get to it. All right, as we can see, kind of the, the usual suspects sitting at the top of the, the Roto standings through the first four days of week two. Uh, Josh, um, Ryan, and myself. And then we've got uh, Jared, who's sitting at second right now in Roto standing. It's going to be interesting to see how his week plays out, seeing as how he was 0-3 for week one, which we can see the current standings on the top and the middle. Um, and the, uh, through Thursday and the middle middle, um, he's sitting at 2-1, and one, looking to go 3-0. and oh, So uh, could be right back into the, uh, into the playoff hunt depending on how the weekend shapes up. Uh, usual suspects at the top for uh, the first four days of week two. Um, of note, Carter and Jared, both of them looking to go either 2-1 and one or 3-0 and oh this week after starting 0-3. Oh uh, Big Mac looking like 0-3, oh 0-3, oh could be uh, gunning for that, that number one pick and torque um, after this week. Uh, as far as the week so far through – for the stats and categories is very impressive that Ryan with viral load was uh, he's just across the board, his hitting lineup, 10 homers, and he's got a 570 slug right now. And it's not just one dude. He's got two or three guys with two or three homers uh, really spreading it out. If he can get a couple saves, um, he's looking like he's going to be unstoppable through the week. So he might start six and zero. Josh is sitting at the top of the standings right now, and he's got a good chance to go six and zero as well. Uh, his homers are a little low and he's got no saves, but his pitching staff is just going to carry him this whole year. He's probably going to, and he made the comment last night in a text that he might be one of the only teams that's not going to turn to streaming because he just doesn't have to. Um, and then the other note for this is I've added over in the far right just how many pitchers that we have left. And because we're all out of conference this week, I'm not going to go into uh, the division by division breakdown. Um, so as it stands right now, uh, Niska DP has nine pitchers left. So that could really change the outcome on, on a couple of his categories. Uh, and, he, and he's also got a really good um, ERA and whip going right now. So I'm not sure – what what the moves are going to be with that sitting at two and one this week currently is he going to look to put all those pitchers in knowing that it could really screw up his ER and whip when he's already got three wins and 47 Ks um, Josh and uh, Alan both have seven starts left um, going to be once again interesting to see what they do with that are they going to really need them all because uh, they're already sitting at the top of, of the uh, standings for the rest of the week um, very interesting to see what happened uh, for the waiver run when it came to uh, Allen's team. And I know this, this is totally legal and, uh, and probably the way I would have played it too. Um, one of the biggest advantages this year with, uh, with the new rule of you can only bring rookies and amateurs down to your minors is you can continue to do that um, with – with you know no penalty I don't want to say loopholing because uh, we all voted for it and this is the rule we have so as it stands fan track sucks when it comes to waivers um, every every single time we do a waiver run I end up with four or five dudes in my minors I don't know how to fix that so I, I believe what happened last night um, what uh, what Alan did was he put he essentially maxed out his minors. So all of his claims wouldn't end up on the minors and he would have to drop them. So if you go and look at his minor league uh, hitters right now, he's got an all-star lineup sitting in his minor leagues, which, I mean, he's going to have to work with throughout the, the weekend to call them back up. But uh, very smart. What ended up happening was he added a bunch of dudes that are pitching today, Friday. So what he can end up doing is, have them pitch Friday, immediately cut them afterwards, and then he's got all of his stud hitters back up for Saturday and Sunday to close out the week. So um, I don't know if that's going to be the way uh, waivers and streaming ends up going this year as we all try and, uh, you know, work the wire as well as the, the league rules when it comes to uh, moving minor leaguers down. And uh, I know Josh was very adamant about this when we talked last night. Um, I don't think Allen did it. I don't want to 
insult him if he did do it this way to move all these guys down. But I know one of the big reasons why he did move them down was so that uh, when his claims went through, he wasn't dealing with the problem of having to drop them because they went to his minor leaguers. So very smart. I mean, he's got five starting pitchers today already. Um, and then he can drop a, a bunch of them and then move back up, you know, Sanchez, Bregman, and, and Judge uh, for the remainder of the, of the week, Saturday and Sunday. Um, so let's go over to news and notes. News and notes, awesome uh, news today. This is the first day, I think, all year that we're going to actually have every team uh, playing and not postponed for something weather-related or, or uh, COVID-related. So the Cardinals and Tigers were the only matchup for the whole week that had been postponed the Phillies and Yankees was weather for Monday. And then they made that up in a double header, which uh, double headers or, or, or whatever uh, the seven inning thing. I don't really like, um, I made the comment about how difficult it is for uh, a starting pitcher to get the win in a seven inning double header, because by the fourth or fifth inning, if they can make it to the fifth, maybe they can get the win. Um, managers are going to be so quick to pull dudes to, just to get to their, uh, their bullpen to finish out the game in the you know fifth, sixth and seventh innings. Um, the other note, the Marlins have returned and I, you know, right now they're sitting at the top of the standings. I think they're six and one. Uh, they played Baltimore, I think every game. So We'll see what happens there, but uh, they're looking pretty good right now. Uh, other big injury notes, uh, Scherzer going down after our trade. Just just pretty terrible luck. I think we got like two-thirds of an inning out of him before he went down. Um, hopefully it's not something that will be season-ending and it's just a hamstring, but uh, I'm not really sure what the answer is there. Um, yeah, Ryan kind of got screwed with, with that. Uh, Oh, shit. Yeah, Ryan got screwed with that. Um, you know, the trade I got Lindor, and then he ended up with Scherzer for two thirds of an inning. So hopefully he comes back. It uh, looks like Otani's done pitching for the year, probably for the best, because uh, he's been terrible. Uh, immediately homered in his first at bat back at DH. So uh, hopefully uh, he can at least continue to hit, and maybe he's even more productive because now he'll be DHing for most days instead of having to rest the day before and after a start. Um, and then I kind of hit on it before streaming. Uh, I think it's coming, especially after or this next waiver wire when we can finally drop our RFAs um, after that second week. Um, just going to open up more roster spots. I think we're going to see a lot more teams uh, – streaming because of that that's the third additional day of streaming uh that wednesday one is going to be a huge or the thursday night going into friday is going to be the huge one uh because we'll know where we're standing when it comes to era and whip and what we need for for the, the hitting category so like i said alan went out and pretty much added five streamers knowing that his era is sitting at nine point one two and his whip is 1.6 so uh why not why not try and get the the k's and the wins categories uh, and the last thing because i'm not going to go into the uh the divisional breakdown is uh some studs and duds for the week trout returned and he's just raking right now he's got three homers um and you know looking like his mvp self again uh, Matt Olson also contributing really well for um, Ryan's team um, with three homers. And like I said, he's kind of spread out the wealth. I think JT Real Muto, Real Muto has two homers and, and a couple other guys have two homers as well. Uh, Carter's looking uh, looking pretty strong with Luis uh, Robert, Robert, Rob, Robert, however you want to say it. Um, He's got three stolen bases through the first couple games of the week, and I think that would put him at like tied for third of all teams <laughs> for for the week in stolen bases. Nola uh, pitched to Jim against the Yankees, didn't get the win, but uh, 12Ks, one earned against that Yankees lineup is very impressive. Uh, Josh is just going to ride the freaking Cleveland Indians staff uh, with Bieber and Clevenger, and now, uh, what is it, uh, Karin check. Um, in the bullpen, he had uh, those three combined, pitched 14 innings, had 14 Ks, two wins, two holds, and only gave up two runs. So um, the uh, the division for the Indians is is very nice to have uh, a lot of their starting pitchers <laughs> this year. Dylan Bundy also threw a complete game, 10 Ks, one earned uh, for Derek and Beast. On the hitting side, uh, it, it's pretty – 
pretty hard when there's only, you know, some of these teams only played two or three games. Uh, the only real standouts that I think could have started to weigh some of your uh, categories down was Craig Biggio's one for 11 with just an RBI for Josh. And then uh, Fam after that, that blazing fast start kind of tweaked. Uh, something got injured for a little bit, but he's only one for 13 with an RBI for Hammy this week. Uh, on the pitching side, you can pretty much what I do is when I look at the roto stat categories, I just look and say like, all right, who got destroyed for pitching? All right, let's go to <laughs> let's go to Allen's team with bad specimen and see what happened. Uh, Chatwood and McCullers combined for six innings, uh, gave up 18 hits, 16 earned runs, and only five Ks. Um, like I said, he uh, he quickly transitions to uh, just trying to stream and win uh, wins and Ks this <laughs> this weekend, but. Uh, the other one, uh, going into yesterday before Wade LeBlanc pitched, uh, I think my ERA and whip was pretty close to one or below one, which is why I threw out the question on how minimum innings pitched uh, uh, and to qualify because uh, I was looking pretty good in those categories and I knew I wasn't going to win Ks and wins, especially with Carter having, I think he had like 15 uh, starting pitchers this week before any waiver wire ads. Um, but LeBlanc got lit up, went three and a third innings, seven hits, six earned. So uh, I tried to stream, ended up losing a lot of my claims last week or yesterday, last night. Um, and we'll, we'll just go from there. Um, of note for the weekend, a lot of these matchups are very close and, um, and it's really going to come down to the streaming uh, on the pitching side. Uh, you know, uh, Specimen Allen, he's probably going to try and, uh, or he's going to try and get a couple of the categories back and that might make a dent in some of the, in the matchups. Um, I know myself, I don't have many pitchers going this week, uh, weekend. So I, I can see myself going from two Oh and one to one and two pretty quickly. I, I think uh, commission viral load, you're going to set it three and oh, probably win their weeks uh, easily DP making that move. And he's sitting at two and one right now. And um, if Niska can uh, get some contributions from, you know, his pitching staff, he might be able to take some of Carter's stats uh, back as well. Um, other than that, I think there was only a couple matchups that are currently tied right now. Uh, what was it, two or three? Yeah, myself, Carter, and Irby, and uh, Dodger Blue, yep. So uh, pretty much all I've got for this weekend. Um, like I said, I think next week or whenever we're out of division, if I have the time, then I'll go – uh, game by game or break by or matchup by matchup to to see what it really stands like but uh, I had to do a quick one this week and had to get off pretty quick because I got to go do some other stuff um, so looking forward to the weekend hopefully COVID stays out of all of these uh, ballparks and uh, clubhouses so we can continue to have full matchups uh, where everyone is on even footing because all of our players are back uh, thanks for listening that's all I got